The Fourteenth Year of Chinjua. Chapter 14 The Blackmailed Murder Sacrifice Asya returned to the courtyard where the Li family's madam lived with a heavy thought on her mind. By coincidence, Achan was lifting the curtain as she was leaving at that time and caught sight of her. Why did it take you so long to deliver the snacks, she admonished. The madam was waiting for you. The Li family's madam, surnamed Zhang, was over fifty years old and had taken good care of herself that she didn't look as old in comparison to her peers. Even so, there were still wrinkles creeping out of the corners of her eyes and she stooped slightly despite her kindly face. Seeing that Asya had walked in, she smiled and asked, Have you delivered it? Asya bowed and said, Yes. Sir Tang is pleased and asked me to thank you for your trouble, madam. Lady Zhang smiled and said, Master Tang has helped us a lot. All we can do is send some food every now and then, how could that be any trouble? Come here, Asya, I have something for you. Asya came over quickly. Seeing how Lady Zhang was intently watching her, she became somewhat uneasy as she asked, Is there something the matter, madam? Lady Zhang smiled and said, Don't be nervous. I just want to ask you this, do you have feelings for Master Tang? Asya's heart jumped as she stammered, Eh madam. Lady Zhang said, Go on and be honest, I won't hurt you. Just answer yes or no. Asya sounded like a mosquito as she squeaked a yes. Lady Zhang smiled again and said, That's good, then. He is staying alone in the imperial capital with no one to care after him. You're seventeen now and should have been married long time ago. I know that you are interested in Master Tang but with your status, wanting to be the primary wife is not possible. As a concubine though, there should be no problem. You have grown well and have learned a lot from me over the years. You would be free from your contract of servitude soon so you could always marry to a small family and be your own mistress. I'm not sure which one you would prefer and that's why I wanted to talk to you. Do you want to serve Master Tang or would you like to marry out? Remembering that she had just been rejected, Asya's face flushed red. This. This maid has been shameless just now and already took it upon myself to express my feelings to Master Tang. Lady Zhang was surprised but said, Ah, come now. What's there to be ashamed of? Men grow up and take wives and women grow up and get married off. I've been watching over you since your childhood. Not just you but Ah Chun, Ah Chiu and the rest as well. I'll be happy to see you all find a good home. Quickly now, tell me what did he say? Asya kneeled down as strong tears flowed out from her eyes. She hugged Lady Zhang's legs as she sobbed, Madam, he doesn't fancy me. I... I want to die. Lady Zhang helped her up and asked, Is there no chance to change his mind? What exactly did he say? Between weeping and choking up, Asya related everything that had happened earlier. Lady Zhang listened and sighed. It seems that Master Tang really does not have the notion. With your looks and temperament, he shouldn't have refused. But then, not all men are lustful. There would always be an exception. It's no matter. I'll find you another match. Just let me know when you have taken a liking to someone again. This maid will be brazen and boldly beseech that madam to step in on my behalf. If you could speak with Master Tang and convince him, maybe, Asya quietly said. Lady Zhang shook her head and said, this must be a bad karma from a previous life. I've heard that lately, Master Tang has been going out early in the morning only to return really late at night. He must be very busy nowadays. Wait for this spell to pass and I'll have someone to invite him over. Asya broke into tears of happiness as she said, Thank you, madam. Thank you for your kindness. This Ya will remember it forever. A pair of dainty feet tread through the brothel corridor. Exquisite, beautiful skirts had been densely covering them. The way she walked made the hem suede, revealing the embroidered shoes from time to time as if to invite tempting thoughts. It appeared as if what she was steeping on was not hard floor but clouds. She stopped before a door, 
raised her hand and knocked. Who is it? came a voice from the other side of the door. Madam Lu, it's me, she answered, voice gentle and soft with all the silkiness of a woman from Jiangnan countryside. Even in anger, she would sound like she was just being coquettish. Any ordinary man that heard it would have half their bones go limp. The person inside didn't immediately come over and open the door, as she usually did while grinning ear to ear. Rather, she mumbled to herself for some time before she called out, Wait a moment, I'm coming. Through the window rib of the pasted paper wall, she could see a vague figure approached. Then the door opened with a creak as the woman said, So it's you Kingzi, come in, quick. Kingzi inquired, Madam are you not feeling well? You don't look too good. Madam Lu forced a smile and said, It's nothing. Come in. Come and sit down. She stuck her head out again and yelled, Little Liuzi, bring tea. Kingza stopped her and said, No need to bother, Madam Lu. I just came to discuss something with you. Madam Lu gave a start and said, Just say it. Why are you being so serious? Did I ever denied you something you ask? Just say it. Kingza deliberated for a short a moment then seemed to finally make up her mind and said, I want to redeem myself. Madame Lu's chrysanthemum-like smile disappeared, what did you say? Kingza sighed but repeated with a firmer tone, I want to redeem myself. Madame Lu no longer had her previous composure as she jumped almost three feet in a row as she said, No, I don't agree. Kingza looked at her firmly and said, Madame Lu, we agreed earlier that if I could scrape together five thousand tails, then you would let me redeem myself. She took a bank voucher out from her lapels and explained. This is an authentic bank note for five thousand tail issued by Huatong Bank. Madame Lu's tone eased as she said, King Zia, don't say that this madam's words are untrustworthy. I just don't know which young master you got that money from. Five thousand tail is not a small amount. This amount was undeniably spent on you so you can take all this money now. If you redeem yourself now, what kind of livelihood will you be able to live on? You better stay for a few more years and earn more. Besides, I've seen many of girls who easily used up all their money after leaving the Huanyi Tower. They had no choice but to return to their old profession but by that time, their value had dropped down a lot. Even if they come back to the business, they wouldn't be able to ask for the same price that they're used to. King Zia, Madame Lu will not lie to you. Rather than redeem yourself, it'd be better for you to marry as a concubine to whichever young master is interested in you. That would be a better life for you. Madame Lu, King Zia interjected, how many of the men coming to brothels are any good? Why do you try to coax me with this words? I am 19 now and have been doing this for several years. We've associated for so long, having a predestined affinity without friendship. Madame Lu please do not hold me back. Can you please let me go to live a quiet life? Madame Lu saw that she was very determined, and her face became very hard to look at. Her lips opened and closed twice as if she wanted to say something harsh but after her eyes shifted about, and she finally put on a smiling face. All right, all right. Since the conversation have turned to this, then I have nothing else to say. You've been with me since you were a child, and I'm afraid that you'll suffer once you go out on your own. So, I will take only 4,000 tail so you can keep the other 1,000 to you keep for yourself for your future needs. She was surprised that Madame Lu who have loved nothing but money all her life, would say something like this. Not only was she readily willing to set her free, she was even willing to leave her some money, making her felt somewhat touched. She kowtowed to the brothel madam as she said, I have depended upon your guidance for so many years, Madam Lu. This Kingza cannot thank you enough but I have no means to pay it back with. Please accept the full 5,000 tails. I still have some private savings and won't starve to death too soon. Kingza, the brothel madam took her hand and pulled her to sit down. Lowering her voice, she asked, tell this madam honestly. 
Was this banknote given to you by young master Zhen earlier? Now that he has died, the whole matter has apparently blown out of proportion. Won't this money stir up trouble? Madam Lu, where did you get that idea? Kingzi asked flabbergasted. I didn't receive this money from young master Zhen. He was on allowance. Even if he had some spending money on hand, there's no way he would give me this much in one breath and help me redeem myself. It all came from a proper source. You don't need to worry. Madame Lu said, if you don't explain to me I wouldn't understand and my heart will be troubled. You have been aware that young master Zheng had stayed in our Huanyi tower the day before he died which is an ambiguous situation to speak of. If those nobles tried to do something, it would be easy for them to cut us out. Isn't the case closed? King Zhu responded. It was said that the murderer was the second young master of the Marquis of Wuan's estate who colluded with young master Zheng's concubine to murder him. What does it have to do with us? The brothel madam forced a smile as she said, although that what was being said, I heard that people in the Northern Administrative Court Division are still investigating, saying that there are doubts in the case, and I don't know what those doubts are. I am in charge of your everyday finances. How did you manage to raise 5,000 tails all of a sudden? I won't force you to stay but you have to tell the truth, otherwise none of us might be able to escape when this money gets us into trouble. Kingza was silent for a moment then finally started, I can't share the origin of the money but it was given by a certain benefactor, who was interested in me and wanted to marry me. However, there was a wife in the family so it can't be done. Madame Lu narrowed her eyes as she said, since you say so, I'm relieved. However there I still one thing that I don't understand and was waiting for you to explain it to me. Kingza said, if Madame Lu have something she wanted to say, she might as well be frank about it. The brothel Madame said, I heard that you have purchased up a house outside. Is this true? Kingza's facial expression changed as she asked, Madame, what is the meaning of this? Did you send someone to check on me? Madame Lu's face darkened as she said, You are one of my girls. Is there anything you think you need to hide from me? What's the harm in me asking about it? Now answer honestly, how did you get that house? Kingza sneered and got up all at once, I think we have talked enough for today. Since Madame have nothing pleasant to say, I will just come back some other time. I hope you won't regret it then. However, before she even had the time to fling her sleeves and leave, an unfamiliar male voice sounded from within the room, Miss Kingzi, if you don't give a clear explanation about the money and the residence, I'm afraid that you won't able to leave today. Kingzi saw two men stepped out from behind the folding screen. One stood tall and looked stern, grasping the hilt of his sword while the other was in a bamboo green robes, looking gentle and refined. Kingza's facial expression drastically changed. When she tried to flee through the door, two soldier was standing guard on it, blocking the way. She had never even noticed when they appear. Who are you? she asked as she tried to feign composure. Tang Fan caught sight of her tightly clenched fists that were half hidden within her sleeves, it's a sign of considerable inner tension. This one is called Tang Fan from the Shuntian Prefecture. We are here to question Miss Kingzi in connection to the murder case at the Marquis of Wuan's estate. Kingzi responded with, isn't the case already closed? Tang Fan shook his head and said, it was not concluded yet because we discovered that there were other suspects involved in the murder. Perhaps, Miss Kingzi can help us identify them. Kingzi vehemently denied, this has nothing to do with me. Zheng Cheng once had an amorous relationship with you. As the saying goes, one night of being together gives a hundred nights of grace. In view of your previous relationship with him, how can you be so unmoved to this extent? Her expression was tense but her back was exceptionally straight as she said, is Master Tang saying that I am I am involved in Zheng Cheng's death? Tang Fan explained, there were two causes of Zheng Cheng's death. One was the thorough wax that was illicitly added to his Fuang Chun medication which caused his energy to drop and his Yang Qi to be depleted. 
The other reason was because the Behuake appointment on top of his head was repeatedly hit by someone to the extent that the meridian channels on his skull rupture. The one responsible for tampering with his prescription was already caught as Miss Kingzi heard, and yes it was the second young modern Zheng Zhi with the help of Zheng Cheng's concubine Huaniang from the Marquis of Wuan's estate. As for the other injury, there were three suspects as the perpetrator since they have the opportunity by spending a lot of time in bed with the deceased. That's you, one of Zheng Cheng's concubine, Yuniang, and Zheng Cheng's mistress, Lady Zhao. Then why didn't Master Tang go find them instead of coming to me? King Zi argued. Ever since the injury to his ache appointment has been discovered, we have dispatched personnel to conduct surveillance on the Huanyi Tower, the Marquis Estate and Zheng Cheng's external residence. When a murder happened, there has to be a motive and an objective. For half a month since the incident Yuniang and Miss Zhao have been staying put in their place, they did not interact with any suspicious people, nor did they suddenly procure large sums of money all of a sudden. Out of the three, you are the only one who suddenly have a large amount of money. So much that not only could you redeem yourself, but you even managed to secretly get someone to purchase a house for yourself. Although you are the top courtesan of the Huanyi Tower, Madame Lu was the one who were managing your finances and therefore should be aware if you were given such large amount by your gracious customers. As Tang Fan finished his sentence, two bailiffs came from the outside and announced, Master Tang, we found this in her room. Tang Fan nodded and said, Let's see, where was it found? The bailiff answered, Under the mattress. She hid it in the corner between the sheet and the frame. Seeing the incense sachet in the other party's hand, King's expression, which had been gradually calming down, panicked once again. Tang Fan unwrapped the incense sachet, sniffed it then passed it to Sui Zhou. After which he spoke to King Zi again, I'm guessing that whatever was in it was the key ingredient that knocked Zheng Cheng out which allowed you to act. There's very little powder in there. You must have thrown the rest away some time ago but didn't clean the sachet well because there was still some residue left. Why didn't you just throw the whole sachet away or burn it all together? That would have leave fewer evidence. She replied coldly, you're not a romantic person, are you Master Tang? Sachet that a woman embroidered herself is either given to the one on her heart or left to her nearest and dearest. How could it be simply thrown away? Tang Fan suddenly recalled Asya's embroidered pouch that he had rejected and tap a finger to his nose. Then he said, having said that, does it meant that Miss Kingza was admitting her guilt? Kingza replied with, yes. I did strike his ache appointment after knocking him out. About a month or so of doing that, anyone would have died without leaving any evidence behind. I've known long ago that someone else wanted him dead so someone else will be suspected. Why would you do such a thing? What do you mean why? Kingzi asked back. Master Tang, aren't you here to catch a murderer so you can then go and take credit? Why do you bother to know the root cause? Zheng Chen was a loathsome man who was very perverted in bed. I'd been unbearably tortured by him for a long time. If I could scam money from him as well as make him completely go away, why wouldn't I do so? Her eyes turned to Madame Lu and she said in a hateful voice, This cruel bitch never acknowledge how much she had harmed me since I was young until I've grown. I wanted to kill her too before I left but I didn't expect that you would come and spoil my plans. Madame Lu was already stunned by her confession. When Kingza looked her way, she was so scared that she could not help but hide behind Tang Fan. She even wanted to grab Tang Fan's sleeves only to be swept aside by Sui Zhou's sleeves. She was then pushed away and knocked into a chair which turned over. She stumbled to the floor and let out yelps of pain. Sui Zhou naturally had no interest in her situation and just coldly ordered take her back for further interrogation. The men on his left and right immediately stepped forward and detained King Zi. Sui Jo expressed ample disgust at the dense stench of cosmetics that filled his nostrils but still followed Tang Fan to King Zi's room and searched around. After taking some suspicious items, they left the Huanyi Tower. Tang Fan sighed and said, when Huanyi Yang confessed, 
I thought at first that we had already found the real culprit. I hadn't anticipated that there would be two groups of people who wanted Zheng Cheng dead. He really had no chance. Sui Zhou asked, aside from the maidservant she sent to purchase the house for her, is there anyone else that woman had any contact with? Tang Fan shook his head and then paused, no, she, wait. He suddenly stopped in his tracks. Sui Zhou also stopped and looked at him with some uncertainty as to why he stopped all of a sudden. Tang Fan didn't explain but only said, we need to hurry and bring Miss Kingza back. There's something we've missed just now. Sui Zhou didn't ask any more questions and swept straight ahead as Tang Fan quickly lost sight of his figure. When Tang Fan arrived at Shuntian Prefecture Prison, he saw Kingza lying on the ground, dead, while Sui Zhou stood by and questioned the bailiffs. The bailiffs said that when they took Kingza away, on account of her being cooperative and a frail woman, they didn't conduct a body search. Unexpectedly, as soon as she was let up, she took out a small dagger from somewhere and directly stabbed herself in the chest and was dying in the blink of an eye. Carrying a sliver of hope, Tang Fan crouched down to press against her pulse only to find that there was no coming back from this. Chapter End The Fourteenth Year of Chinjua Chapter 15 The Empty Mansion and the Funeral Tablets Faced with Kingza's corpse, Tang Fan couldn't help but smile bitterly and said to Sui Zhou, we were too careless. Sui Zhou frowned and said, she took the blame for someone else and protected the true perpetrator. Tang Fan nodded and continued, just now she confessed too readily to everything. I realized that something was wrong about that so I wanted to interrogate her more properly once she was brought back. I just didn't expect her to be so determined that she could kill herself instantly. Just before we hurry back, what did you thought of? Sui Zhou asked. The Eastern Depot. Even if it was Kingzi herself who wanted to kill Zheng Cheng, setting aside how she got the money from Zheng Cheng or how she was well versed in acupuncture points, but how did she, a woman from a brothel, manage to get the Eastern Depot to intervene and took the corpse from your Northern Administrative Court Division? Isn't that highly suspicious? Sui Zhou nodded. It was obvious that he had just thought of that, too. The way the two men think were in sync with each other which made them have a rare tacit understanding when investigating the case that sets them apart from the others. Sui Zhou said, I'll check on the Eastern Depot side on my own. Tang Fan understood and said, then I will continue to investigate King's side. Sui Zhou nodded slightly. He didn't utter another word and only left immediately. Tang Fan looked at King's prone figure down the floor. She looked as pretty as before but she had lost the delicate-like beauty that she was famed for. A dagger was embedded in her chest, her blood had slowly congealed with her body started to stiffen. People die like candle lights going out. With one step into the Yin Yang River, everything was no more. No matter how much money or what peerless beauty one was, they were all in vain. Kingza committed suicide was plainly because she was scared of being interrogated once she entered the prison which would pinpoint the real culprit behind the case. Still, lone deaths had been challenging since time immemorial. For her to be able to take such a decisive act in such a short period of time, there clearly had to be someone or something that drove her to shield the murderer. But with her death, she did cut off this trail of clues. Would Tang Fan be able to proceed from here? Of course, why not? No matter how daring she had been, Kingza was merely a brothel woman in the end. With her limited point of view, there was no way she could have thought too far ahead. She most probably believed that with her death, everything would be resolved. Thus, Tang Fan began to speculate from different angles. She had purchased a house and wanted to redeem herself, is this for herself or for somebody else? If it were for herself, she wouldn't have committed suicide. Those who value their own life would vehemently cling to it. No matter how small the chance of survival there was, they would struggle even at death's door. In view of that, she must have done this for somebody else. Having been found out and caught, she had realized that no matter what would happen, 
the end conclusion wouldn't be anything good. Considering that she might be unable to endure the torture they would put her though, it would end up with her revealing the truth. She probably thought that it would be better to simply kill herself so she could save the one behind the scenes. The one behind the scenes. Tang Fan stood up and called, Lao Wang. Lao Wang answered, Master Tang. You said before that Miss Kingsy asked her maid to purchase a mansion for her. Where is that maid now? Lao Wang said, she wasn't at Huanyi Tower today so she must have went elsewhere. We had her followed for many days now, though. We also knew the location of the mansion that she bought. I have asked Lao Gao to keep watch outside of that mansion. Tang Fan nodded his head in appreciation and order, go there to continue keeping the place under surveillance and swap place with Lao Gao. I have some questions for him. Also, please ask someone to prepare a coffin for Miss Kingzi and bury her body. Lao Wang acknowledged and left immediately to carry out the order. Lao Gao soon arrived and reported the result of his surveillance for the past few days, sir, the mansion is located in the east of the outer city at Ziobi Street. I asked the people living nearby. The houses there are not expensive but there is one strange thing, that mansion has not been occupied since it was bought. Did anyone ever come in or out of it? Tang Fan asked. Except for the people that the maid had hired to clean the place, I haven't seen anyone go in or out of the mansion. Tang Fan pondered for a moment and said, in that case, come with me. I want to see it for myself. Lao Gao quickly said, Master Tang, it's dirty and messy there. I'm afraid that a nobleman like you would be sullied. Tang Fan burst out laughing and said, How am I nobleman? There are some things that needs to be asked but won't be as effective if I have you do it. I need to go there as well to see the situation for myself. Seeing that he couldn't be stopped, Lao Gao had no choice but to go and follow him out. Upon reaching the site, Tang Fan came to understand why Lao Gao said what he had said before. Xiaobi Street was actually a slum area. Due to its proximity to the mass burial ground outside of the city, anyone with a tiny bit of capability would definitely refuse to live here. Over time, the place had turned into a converging spot for people from all sorts of life. There was an abandoned Taoist temple not far away. Sewage overflowed nearby, flies were buzzing all around. The people around were wearing worn and patched robes. Compared to the dignified, tall standing government offices inside the city, this place was like another world altogether. The pristine, fair and handsome Tang Fan who was not wearing his official robes, stood in contrast to everything on site that he instantly attracted many different gazes. There was no lack of those with malice mixed within those gazes, too. The two men came to an old mansion. Sir, this is the mansion that Miss Kingsey had someone bought. Upon seeing the place for himself, Tang Fan was sure that Kingsey definitely did not bought this house for her to live in herself. The fact that she could procure as much as 5,000 tail to redeem herself, why would she subject herself to live in such a condition? Moreover, with her looks, it would be a lot safer for her to stay in the Huanyi Tower than to live in this place. The courtyard gate was locked but Lao Gao have efficient skill and effortlessly got the lock open with his own methods. Tang Fan pushed the door open and entered. Even though the inside has been redecorated and tidied up, the scent of rot still permeated the air which made it seem as if the house had been sealed for many years. Lao Gao who had been following behind Tang Fan felt a chill in his heart, Sir, this house is eerie. It's likely that no one lives here. Lao Gao, didn't you once run off to a burial ground on the countryside and spent the night there? How could something like this scare you? Tang Fan teased. Lao Gao laughed bashfully and said, about that. I was young and didn't know better back them, I even peed on other people's grave. Now, even if you pay me ten tails, I still won't dare to do it. The inside of the courtyard was empty and bleak. The few old trees in it were withered, more dead than alive. There was a wooden bucket by the well but it looked just as decrepit as the yard, with its bottom ridden with holes and its ropes rotting away. Tang Fan took a step towards the inside, 
pushed open the door of the main house and then had to pause. In this small mansion, there were no chair or tea table set up. However at the center of the room, there was a single table. There were some fresh fruits arranged on top of it and behind the fruits were four neatly arranged funeral tablets, two of which were were padded high at the center and the other two on the side were placed lower. Approaching for a closer look, he saw that the fruits had been siding there for some time as they were a little soft when pressed. Using this as gauge, these were probably put there at the same time that Kingsley hired people to clean the place a few days ago. Four funeral tablets naturally meant for four people. One was for the dead father, Feng Meijian. One was for the dead mother, Lady Qin of the Feng family. One for the dead second little sister, Feng Qingen. One for the dead fourth little brother, Feng Qingning. It wasn't hard to guess based on the names on the funeral tablets that King's surname was most likely Feng before she entered the brothel and these people were actually her family. It was indeed saddening to lose one's parents and loved ones prematurely and have one's family fall apart. However in this world, no one would bore love or hate without reason. Kingsey had been in the brothel for so many years and have entertained all sort of countless customers. Tang Fan did not believe that she will kill Zheng Cheng purely because she could no longer stand him and have the burden of taking someone's life on herself. Father, mother, second sister, fourth brother. King Zhe. What was her place within her family? If she was the eldest daughter, then where did the Feng family's third child go? Tang Fan mumbled to himself for a bit then called out, Lao Gao. Yes, Master Fang. Didn't you previously ask around the neighborhood about the previous owner of this house? What did you find out? I did but this area was completely burnt down by a huge fire several years ago. Many of the original residents were either burned to death or moved away. Only one elderly had a slight recollection of it. He said that there was once a family surnamed Feng who lived here a decade or so ago. They weren't exactly sure what crime they have been committed or why, but authorities came by one night. The men of the family were forcefully enlisted and banished while the women had all gotten sick and died. It was quite a tragedy. The house was then seized and that elderly didn't dare inquire more about it. Later, it was said that the house was haunted and none had tried to live in it since then. Tang Fan frowned and asked, did they say it was ten years ago? Lao Gao answered quickly, they couldn't remember exactly but I reckoned it was about thirteen or fourteen years ago. It was because they said that Kingza was only six years old when she was sold into the brothel. She is 19 this year so wouldn't the timeline be just right then, dot. Tang Fan mulled over the information for a while then suddenly said, come on. We have to go back to the Shuntian prefecture. Huh? Are you not going to look around anymore? No need. I've just realized a lead. As he talked, Tang Fan swiftly walked out. Lao Gao turned to look back at the funeral tablets in that shadowy room. He couldn't help but shudder as he quickened his pace to follow out of the property. As soon as Tang Fan returned to the Shuntian prefecture, he went straight for the records from 13 years back. Being in the Shuntian prefecture had certain advantages. As the highest administrative office in charge of the capital city and its surrounding area, all events in the area, large or small, will be filed into separate categories. Tang Fan focused his attention on the major cases that were compiled 13 years ago. Unfortunately, in spite of researching for the whole night, he did not find any information about any issue involving the Feng family. Noticing the sky had the glimmers of dawn in it, only then did he become aware that his eyes were dry and achy, his head felt heavy. Am I looking in the wrong direction? 13 years ago, it was the first year of Qinzhua's reign, the year the current emperor ascended to the throne. Tang Fan held his head in his hand and tried to think back. What had happened that year? Following his parents' death, he set out alone and wandered the world to study. He traveled around in order to learn about the world's events unlike those who solely rely on reading books. The Feng family got into a situation where all their men were banished into the army so whatever the crime that was committed, it must have been a serious one. 
and even if they didn't do the crime themselves, they were involved in it. Involved. Or implicated. Tang Fang wrote the words, stroke by stroke on a white piece of paper. In the first year of Chinjua, the Fang family. Master Tang, Inspector Du John called out as he stood by the door, General Sui of the Northern Administrative Court Division has arrived and waiting to see you. Upon hearing it, Tang Fan couldn't help but smile. Sitting up straight, he said, do invite him in quickly. Chapter End The Fourteenth Year of Chinjua Chapter 16 The Count of Ying Chen, the Sun family and Zhang Sun a maiden from the Sun family. The moment Sui Zhou stepped into the office, he saw Tang Fan smiling sweetly to himself. Sui Zhou. Tang Fan rose up and greeted him then said, Huang Chuan, I have a favor to ask of you. I heard that the Northern Administrative Court Division has records of events throughout the years, right? That is correct. Tang Fan asked, Can I have a look at them? Sui Zhou nodded and added, Something has come up about the latest fire incident at the Eastern Depot. Tang Fan's spirit was lifted up, what is it? Sui Zhou started to explain, the guard on duty that day was named Meng Kishin, he was transferred from the Jinyue. His family has been a military family for generations. Both his father and grandfather were once assigned to serve under the former Count of Ying Cheng. Although the Eastern Depot was run by eunuchs, the people working under them weren't necessarily all eunuchs. A lot of them were actually borrowed from the Jinyue so it was easier for Sui Zhou to find things out if he wanted to check something. Count of Ying Cheng, Tang Fan murmured to himself. Count of Ying Cheng of the Sun family. Suddenly his eyes lit up. Sui Zhou nodded. Unable to wait even for a bit, Tang Fan tugged on Sui Zhou's sleeve and pulled him outside. Take me to see the dossiers of the Northern Administrative Court Division during the first year of Chinjua. I have some ideas. The records in the Northern Administrative Court Division were really much more complete than the one at the Shuntian Prefecture. Such was the advantage of being a Secret Service Division. Many of the Shuntian Prefecture's archive had been brought over here but the reports here were more extensive. Not only did it include the whole development of the events, it even have some information that were not publicly disclosed. At this moment though, Tang Fan did not have the intention to explore any undisclosed information not related to this case. He directly looked for the records from the first year of Chinjua, then pulled them out to read through them while explaining to Sui Zhou what he had found at the Feng family's old mansion. Sui Zhou asked, are you suspecting that the Feng family also have a connection to the Count of Ying Cheng? Tang Fan nodded and confirmed, I did have that thought but I still need to find concrete evidence. Otherwise it will be difficult for us to convict someone in connection to the fire incident at the Eastern Depot alone. Sui Jo didn't bother to talk more and merely bowed his head then picked up a dossier and started reading it through. Tang Fan had been fatigued by staying up all night but since Sui Jo had come with another major clue, he was now brimming with vigor. He was reading the records very quickly and seemed to be reading ten lines in a single glance as he quickly turned the pages. In truth, the Chinjua Emperor had already ascended the throne the year before the first year of Chinjua. At that time, the name of the former emperor was still being used since New Year needed to pass before it could be officially changed. Still, many events had occurred on that year. After the Tumu Stronghold Rebellion, the trust in the imperial court was severely damaged. The imperial capital army was almost completely wiped out. Many natural disasters occurred as well. Many long-established ills finally broke out in that year alone that at least four local rebellions started up. Although they were all eventually completely put out, the imperial court still wasted manpower and resources on them. On top of that, the White Lotus sect also took the opportunity to add to the mess. They confused the common folks and incite rebellion against the imperial court by citing that it was the wills of the gods. Because of that, the dossier of that year was such a thick stack that it took the two of them more than half of the day to read through all. In the first month of the first year of Chinjua, the Yao people of Datoxia led a rebellion, successively. 
No, not this one. He continued to look down. In March of the first year of Qinghua, Sichuan's Duzangs and the Miaos joined up for a rebellion, invading Zhang'an, Heijiang and various other counties. Li Jin, the Count of Xiancheng was given the imperial edict to lead the campaign against the barbarians with eunuch Lu Hong to supervise the army which lasted until mid-June. Not this one either. In May of the first year of Qinghua, the rebel Zhao Duo falsely declared himself Emperor Zhao. Not this one either. In March of the first year of Qinghua, Lu Tong, Shi Long, and Feng Zilong the refugees of Jingxiang, gathered together under false pretenses of founding a new country and gathered hundreds of thousands of people to invade Hans Hong, and won a total victory. Soon after, Tang Fan's gaze froze, his finger that was pressed against the dossier stopped abruptly. Huang Chuan, come and take a look at this. He called out. Sui Zhou came over, eyes sweeping over the place Tang Fan was indicating, Feng Zilong. Tang Fan said, Exactly. Is it possible that your Northern Administrative Court Division has found out about this Feng Zilong's relationship with the Feng family? Sui Zhou nodded and replied, It is. Rebels like Feng Zilong would normally have a dossier about the punishments of their family and relations. He quickly found a copy of that record. There it is. Feng Zilong, a native of Jingxiang area, had joined the rebellion in the first year of Qinghua and have so far evaded capture by the empire. In order to set an example, the imperial court decreed that all male members of the family of Lutong, Shilong, and Feng Zilong are to be arrested and banished to the army in order to compel the rebels to surrender. The Feng family in the south of the imperial capital is related to Feng Zilong. They were supposed to be banished to the border army but at that time, there was a flooding of the Yellow River in the area of Henan. Local officials have presented memorial to the imperial court petitioning for workers to be dispatched to build river dikes and the male members of the Feng family were amongst the group of the people that were sent over. Tang Fan inquired, where was that? Sui Zhou answered empathically, Henan Weiwei Prefecture. Tang Fan was shocked and said that's the hometown of the missing pharmacy worker of the rejuvenation hall. Sui Zhou added, not only that. The place where the former Count of Yingchen was stationed was in Henan. Tang Fan gently puffed out his breath, in this way everything is connected. We were right in our guess that there were two groups that killed Zheng Cheng. One was Zheng Ji and Hui Niang and the other was Feng Qingzi who probably have the support of Zheng Sun. Hui Niang might not be aware of Zhang Sun's action but Zhang Sun must have known of Hui Niang's movement and therefore use the pharmacy worker to add fuel to the fire. In accordance to the funeral tablets of the Feng family, there were two family members that were not accounted for, Sui Zhou said. One was Feng Qingzi and the other ought to be a brother. Based on Feng Qingzi's actions, that brother is probably still alive and currently under the protection of the Count of Ying Cheng. That was probably why she aided Zhang Sun with homicide. She didn't hesitate to kill herself to protect Lady Sun because she knew that her brother would have to be kept protected. If Lady Sun was found out, she would equally unlikely to escape death and Zhang Sun would take revenge on her brother. Sui Zhou normally didn't speak so much in one breath yet his facial expression remained as normal. Tang Fan felt like laughing but held himself back and instead nodded his head seriously and said, that's right. If we look at the time frame, Hui Niang and Zheng Zhi was already intent on poisoning Zheng Zhi but Lady Sun might have felt that the effect was too slow so she gave it a push on the sly. Although for now, all of these are mere speculations. If we find Feng Qingzi's brother or that pharmacy worker, we will find proof if our suppositions were correct. Sui Zhou frowned and said, that pharmacy worker won't be found again. He is such an insignificant figure and most likely had been silenced by the Soon family long ago. But we can still look for Feng Qingzi's brother. In order to coerce her, Zhang Soon would keep her brother where she could keep an eye on him so that she could be at ease. In that case, we must keep Feng Qingzi's death a secret for now, Tang Fan said. We should only let it be known that Miss Qingzi is being detained here in the Northern Administrative Court Division, and to keep surveillance on the Marquis of Wuhan estate. If it became known that Miss Kingsey is being kept here, 
someone is bound to get worried and might say something they didn't meant to and thus, reveal the scheme. Suijo gave an emphatic nod. With his usual no-nonsense look, he got up, went out and ordered his subordinates to get to work. The Jinyue and the Eastern Depot can get into everywhere. They have hundreds of agents that was secretly set up all over the Imperial capital to keep an eye on all Imperial officials so that whenever the Emperor needed reports on them, it could be given to him at any time. This was an arrangement that was put in place since the reign of the Second Ming Emperor. By the time that Sui Zhou returned, Tang Fan was already slumped on the table and fast asleep. Tang Fan had kept awake all night. He had barely kept his vigor to check out the records that day. As soon as he felt relaxed, he immediately fell asleep. Sui Zhou had been looking forward to ask him something related to the case but seeing how Tang Fan was, it wouldn't be good if he went over and shook him awake. So, he simply sat down next to him and reorganized the dossiers that they had rummaged through. He took the dossier and walked to the cabinet, his eyes unintentionally glanced through Tang Fan's face. The light shone in from the outside and slowly spread through his form revealing even the slightest detail and highlighting his jade-like features that was flawless. Normally he would not have noticed it but looking at him with this illumination and on this angle, it wasn't hard for him to see that Tang Fan's eyelashes were long, thick, and slightly curled. One look at the faint indigo beneath his eyes and he could tell that the man didn't get enough sleep the night before. After observing for a short moment, Sui Zhou then shifted his gaze away, put the records back in its storage and locked it. Chapter End